Welcome back. I'm your host, Doug Cullen with Pinkerton Academy. Today, we're continuing our series by showcasing a company here in Derry, Pica Manufacturing, that has made some significant decisions in the growth of their company as a result of the relationship with Pinkerton Academy's Center for Career and Technical Education, as well as the students in certain programs of study. You'll hear more about that. The relationship has provided for Pica a foundation that they'll describe through our interviews with the company's senior leadership, as well as an understanding through interviews with certain faculty how these programs of study closely align with the employment needs of this organization. Thanks for being here and enjoy the episode. Well, thanks for being here. As you heard during the introduction, we're going to have a conversation today between Pinkerton Academy and Pica Manufacturing, an organization that Pinkerton Academy has really enjoyed having a very strong relationship with over the last several years. So we have a panel here today, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves so you have a better understanding as far as who's in front of you this, this morning or afternoon, depending on when you're seeing us. We'll start to my right. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, you bet. And you weren't exaggerating. It's been a good relationship and continues to be. Rich Chevalo, um, the CEO and founder of Pica Manufacturing. Ernie Byron, the engineering teacher at Pinkerton Academy. I'm Cassidy Snare, the marketing teacher at Pinkerton Academy. Well, thanks, pan panelists, for being here. So we're going to start off with some questions today that really give um, the viewers an understanding as far as who PICA is as an organization, their history, and then how the relationship developed that's really been, one, beneficial to students as well as beneficial to the organization. So, Rich, I'm going to start with you. Tell us a little bit about PICA's history in the town of Derry or, or possibly before and a little bit about your company and the products that you service. Thanks. 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 Thanks for having me. You uh, bet. Well, PICA's core expertise has always been in flex circuits. We originally started up as a, a sales rep firm and were involved in some very high-tech products. When the optical network world was built out, we were involved with Nortel Networks, involved in uh, cell phone manufacturing companies, and just a whole range of high-tech products. And our job has always been to help provide components to them so they can get their products to the market. We've been very successful with that. Um, we transitioned to more of a manufacturing company here in Derry about 15 years ago. And we now not just sell product, but we manufacture our own product either sometimes some in Derry and some of it offshore. Um, and about oh, seven years ago, we bought a design company where rather than just help other people bring their products to the market, we started working on... Um, some of our own products and developing. And that's really when the relationship with Pinkerton kicked in as we started to develop our own products and the engineering talent and help we've been able to get from Pinkerton has been very, very helpful. That's great. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the relationship in just a moment, but give me a sense and the audience a sense as far as what has really changed in some of the technologies that you've seen over the last several years from your organization's perspective? Well, one of the things we like to say is um, things are smaller and smarter. Okay. And one of the things that our technology that we bring in, in flexible printed circuits is it allows you to make things smaller and more compact. You know, like an Apple iPhone may have uh, 15 flex circuits in it or whatever the latest model is. It varies a lot. and. As you're able to com package electronics in smaller form factors, you can do more with it. You know, the processors get faster, they're more efficient when everything's close together. And smaller, smarter, and the technology to manufacture those type of products, that's kind of the trend we see in the, the, tr the way we're, we're kind of riding. Okay. I'm going to jump over to Ernie just for a moment because I think the relationship, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, the relationship really has been driven 
by a lot of the work that Ernie's been doing with his students in the engineering, specifically in mechanical engineering. So Ernie, tell us a little bit about your particular program of study and how you've seen students really matriculate and get involved with a deeper and deeper understanding of mechanical engineering concepts. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we have five different programs that we offer as pre-engineering. We start with intro to engineering design. We'll move into principles of engineering, which covers in a large gambit. We'll go into digital electronics. We go into computer integrated manufacturing and how that works in manufacturing areas. And then we go to a capstone course, which is called engineering design and development. And basically we have a lot of students that are always looking for an opportunity to practice the things that we're teaching them in class locally. Okay. So you had made the comment before associated to the relationship between Pinkerton and Pika, Rich. So talk to us a little bit when you said, uh, and that's when the relationship started to develop. Talk to us a little bit about that particular relationship, the inception, and what you've seen most recently. Well, we had, we've always had a need. Initially, it was a need for um, help with on the manufacturing line to learn how to build work products. But when we started to get into designing our own products, and the products are dependent upon a combination of hardware and software, requires a lot of testing at the end of the, and through the entire process. And we were fortunate enough, and, and sometimes it, 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 you know, it can be a challenging task to get through the test routines we have. And some things can get automated. Sometimes you need to throw people. But hopefully intelligent people that can see things on their own and troubleshoot. And, you know, we've been fortunate with um, the the talent we've got from Pinkerton. They, they don't necessarily have to hold their hands. Uh, I, I like to say the people that I like to work with are the people of their step one. You tell them you need to get to step 10, and you don't have to tell them about step two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we've had a lot of uh, really bright students that have been very helpful. And on the flip side, we've I think we've taught them a lot, too. I, and I think that's part of what we should do to give back a little bit, and we very much enjoy it. What are some of the applications of your particular technologies and products that you've actually had in place? Where would we see those in the marketplace? Well, who else? Historically, in fact, I'll go back to my first customer back nearly 30 years ago. We provided a lot of key components for a company on Long Island called Symbol Technologies. They're the company that developed barcode readers. Okay. So if you go into very, just especially the handheld ones. So that was the first product. Then we actually worked on cell phones for a while. Um, a lot of what we do now is, is medical related. You know, one of our customers makes infusion pumps. You'll see them on the side of beds, mm. you know, the hospital beds, just a whole range of industrial products. But the products that we're developing now, which is actually a, a sub company, a related sister company of Pica Manufacturing is Pica Product Development were developing IoT products, Internet of Things products, where a company, I'll give you a perfect example, we were just uh, launched a product that uh, if a pest control company goes and deploys mouse traps or mm -hmm. animal traps somewhere, rather than having to come back and check the traps, they'll just drop in our system and know when the traps go off. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a system that connects things to the internet through a cellular network, and this, both the sensors and they connect through a hub, which is like a Wi-Fi router. But the, what's really key to it, and we we actually have a saying: say, no Wi-Fi, no power, no problem, because mm -hmm. everything is portable, can be moved anywhere. And there's a lot of different technologies that go into building up everything from battery to RF components and. Uh, it's been fun to expose some of the students to some of those core technologies. There's a list of eight or ten of them that have to come And together. Pinkerton students have been, have been part of oh, a, an array of different yeah. experimentation, yeah. testing, and so forth. Ernie, how does that tie in with, you had mentioned four years of courses. How does that tie in specifically which courses have you seen students into that relate to what Rich is talking about? Well, I've been... I, I, Students that are in our capstone course, as well as our digital electronics course, 
really gravitate to PICA. Uh, these are students that are definitely going to be going to an engineering school and predominantly they're looking to find a way to incorporate what they're learning in class but get hands-on experience in a real world atmosphere. What we can teach them in school reality wise Mm -hmm. I can give them the nuts and bolts and give them the book aspects and just give them my personal experiences. But it's when they go to work for a company like PICA, which is an excellent facility, and they get to see how this really works in the real world. How does engineering function? How do you have to think through a project? How do you have to think through a problem? How do you learn collaboration and all those soft right. skills? Right. It's, it's incalculable. I right. cannot bring all of that into the classroom because I'm just the teacher. When they're suddenly working for somebody, it takes on a whole new level. And let's talk about that for a moment. Roughly, Rich, how many students have we seen in the engineering capacity that you've had a relationship with over the last two to three years? You know, uh, of course, uh, prior to come to here, I made some last minute phone calls sure. to try to get that number, but it looks like in the last, it's probably been in the vicinity of 10 to 12. Historically, going back, Seven years ago, I think it's been over 15 students. That's we, fantastic. We, some of it pre-engineering. Right. So it's, but of course, that's, we're all doing our best to estimate that. Yeah, and we'll talk a little bit about your growth and where you're seeing and, and really what spawned a lot of this conversation. But most recently, as it relates to growth, I know that part of your expansion has also been in our relationship, um, what we've been doing in the area of marketing. And that's a brand, brand new aspect, certainly not for you as a company, but for us, in the relationship. Cassidy, let's point to you for a little bit. Just in your coursework and what you're teaching in the area of marketing and business, talk to us a little bit about the marketing students and your particular program of study. Sure. Um, so our marketing program is a two-year program. The first is an introduction to marketing, and then the second-year students take an upper-level marketing course. Um, <clears throat> the first level, students are really focusing on what is marketing? How do we identify a target market? Figure out who we're going to be marketing towards. We have units where they're looking at product development, branding, selling, market research. Um, so really a wide exposure to marketing in general. And then in their second year, students actually are taking um, two periods of the course, so two credits. The first period, they are running our school store, Campus Corner. And in the second period, they're doing all of the background operations as it relates to the store. So we have students broken up into management teams, um, operations, finance, marketing, and merchandising. And so students are really focusing on running a real business. Um, in the second half of the year in marketing, we focus on social media marketing in our second level program. So Students are actually going to be working towards a certification in marketing um, in social media through HubSpot. And this is a trend that I noticed a lot of colleges oh, excellent. Um, are starting to incorporate industry certifications into their courses. So something that I wanted to provide to my students at the high school level as well. And that's a perfect lead in to now what we're talking about here. Right? Well, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to her and I'm, I'm thinking, man, that's exactly what we need. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, because the... the, the one of the, probably the biggest business, first of all, developing the technology we developed was very difficult. It took about five years. And, but it can be applied to various different unrelated vertical market opportunities. So when you start talking about that, identifying and help developing different marketing opportunities, boy, we need a lot of that. And right. that's gonna be very, very, and we're just at that phase. and. And you know, just so it's clear that that this mark expansion into the marketing program is like what two weeks old. No, that's it's, right. That's yeah, exactly so right. Yeah, this is started. perfect. So it's really perfect timing for us as we've launched this technology that can be applied to different remote monitoring applications. So just what we need. That's perfect. Okay. Ernie, typically where are your students, where are you seeing them going after your particular program? In addition to the work that we've been doing with Pike and other organizations from a college perspective or directly in a workforce, where do you see your students historically uh, going? Historically, most of the students, uh, I get like 99% have been going off to college. They're yep. hoping to 
continue working at some of these associations that they're doing uh, when they come home. Uh, I have quite a few electromechanical engineers, and that's really one of the big things. I have a few roboticists right now that are getting their masters in robotics. So it really, and mechanical engineering is very popular sure. uh, because it's such a generalized engineering discipline that students are able to then transfer that basic knowledge and go into something more special. Cassidy, how about you? If we're in your particular case, where are you seeing your students heading to? So I would say I also, a vast majority of my students do pursue higher education. Um, many of them decide to go into colleges just as a business administration major okay. and then choose concentrations. A lot of them will choose marketing, um, but I think one of our goals at Pinkerton currently is to kind of combine all of our um, business programs together, so marketing, accounting, mm -hmm. and finance, in order for students to get more exposure to the different fields of business that they could be going into. Um, so I'm really excited about that effort. And then I would say I do have some students each year who go right into the workforce. Um, I have a student graduated last year who's working in social media marketing now, and she talked about how that certification really helped her to land yep. that job. So. But I would say traditionally, most students are pursuing a four-year college degree. And the social media aspect of now the relatively new introduction of that, do you see that being a trend that will kind of continue softly? Or do you see that being something that's really going to be a catalyst for what a lot of students are going to be going towards? Yeah, I think a lot of students are going to be going towards um, okay. digital and social media marketing. So that's something I've really been trying to incorporate into my second level yep. um, marketing classes and something in the future i would actually love to have a course just alone in just social media yep. and digital marketing so not only running social media platforms for a company but also um, blogging email marketing text message marketing search engine optimization yep. search engine marketing kind of all of those things combined i think most companies are trending towards a lot of the job opportunities out there are within digital marketing so kind of transitioning pieces of our program to make sure that we're teaching students that content, and then they're getting opportunities through internships like with PICA to be able to apply that knowledge. And that's a perfect lead. And Ernie, uh, you've obviously had a lot of history with, and your students have had a lot of history with PICA. After or during the process of that relationship with PICA, what do you see as a change in the students, either preparedness or desire, or from any perspective you want to bring? Well, the desire has increased, and I think they're becoming more prepared and more professional. They're learning, again, how to adapt the book learning from an engineering standpoint and apply it into the real world where it's necessary. Scientists understand how the world works, but it's engineers that make the useful stuff. Right. And right. so that they're able to take that and be able to go and apply some of these concepts and see something that's actually going to affect people is something that I cannot easily bring into the classroom. Okay. Rich, I want to somewhat close with you then and, and giving you some uh, opportunities for some final thoughts. Talk to us a little bit about, though, what has been the impact to your organization? You said over the last several years you've hired 10 to 12 students. We've had this relationship going on. What has been the impact for your organization up to this point? And how has that relationship impacted your decision for some growth opportunities and staying possibly within the community? That, that, boy, what a good question. First of all, we get to certain points in our development program that can be take tests, especially in testing, that can be cumbersome and take a long time with just our internal resources. If we have the additional technical savvy people that we get from Pickerton, a four-week cycle may be reduced to a two-week cycle. Mm. That's happened. And uh, uh, it's unfortunate that we have to go through this cycle time and time and time again, because you make one change in a software you think isn't going to affect right. anything. It suddenly it does. breaks something else. Sure. So we have to retest. And having, uh, having those people to help get us through those uh, stages and expert at the time. You know, as far as the second question, that's a very good question. Because we just made a decision 
to, we, we, we're expanding and mm -hmm. we need more space. And we've just made a decision to stay in Derry. And we, you know, we had many factors to consider. And one of, from my perspective, the, the bigger factors um, was the fact that we have this pool of talent from Pinkerton. You know, not, not to mention the fact that probably 10 or 15 of my full-time employees are from your graduates, mm. including my COO, you know. So that's how the, you know, I, I grew up in Ohio, lived in southeastern Massachusetts for 35 years. And our first presence in Derry was as a result of uh, Mark Perret, who was a graduate yeah, at yeah. Pinkerton. Uh, the relationship with the town and his family, and it, it's just grown from there, and it's it's proven very beneficial for great. unforeseen reasons. What do you see as your vision for tomorrow? Where do you see your company going then? That's another very good question, because if you asked me that question three or four years ago, it would have been a little different hmm. than it is today. We have, in the last couple of years, uh, invested a lot in uh, high-end manufacturing equipment here mm. in Derry, where, you know, our, our company actually has several different divisions. We have a, a engineering sourcing office in Shanghai, and we have a manufacturing facility in Malaysia. And there's more and more drive to bring manufacturing back to the U.S. And right. we've right. invested heavily in some really state-of-the-art equipment for assembling electronic uh parts and, and products here in Derry. And we're, you know, the, the other thing that's been nice working with Derry, the uh, process of uh, permitting and working with the town. Yeah. I don't know if it's always as smooth as it is with us, but- you know, it, Derry has done a lot of work to make that a little yeah. bit easier than it they, They've than done it, a, and, and, we, and we're fortunate, uh, and I don't know how much this has benefited, or just the town as a whole, but some of the relationships we have from mm -hmm. the town, it's just been amazingly helpful, the, That's great. the, the town too, in addition to Pick Pickerton. That's great. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, we're, and we're getting that opportunity to take that, what used to be a dirty word, manufacturing, and change Absolutely. it. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not what it was for your parents 30 to 40 years yeah. ago. Right, right. Now yeah. the work conditions are clean. They expect people to understand some of the basics. They're willing to train people and bring them up to get them to understand not only the concepts, but to add to the value in the company. So I, I think this is fabulous because, again, we're changing that dynamic of what is manufacturing. Right. Right. We have, by the way, I don't mean to interrupt, oh, but you may not be aware of this, but one of the uh, former interns that now is at, at college is now, he's back working with us, and he's actually taking a lead role in designing one of our sensors. No, oh, that's uh, excellent. Working with the, the CAD program. I could draw a blank on the name, but you probably know but it. But that's is. a great, I mean, that's yeah. a, a great closer because that really shows not only has the relationship been beneficial to both of you, both of us, uh, during the period of time, but look at the advantage of the student going forward and everything that they've been able to now bring back and coming back to the community. And I think that's part of what we want the listeners to understand as students develop these relationships, especially one is so uh, wonderful as we've had with Pica Manufacturing before they graduate from high school. The value of doing that is good then. It's also very, very good in the future, and it helps develop our economy. Thank you all for being here. It's been a great Thank conversation. You. We look forward to the next time. Thanks for listening.